please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Thief the Dark Project, Gold, Thoughts, Video Game Thoughts. The cell phone of Noti stuff is back. When I first saw the Burricks, or as I like to call them, the Big Broodies from Earth Engine 1, I did kind of wonder Shouldn't they be able to smell you? They, they just, they look like they might be able to. But to be fair, the rat people, you know, those Neanderthal walking knuckle draggers of, you know, the pagan rule, do appear to actually. I, I don't know if they literally use the smell, it's just if they can sort of sense you in front, they will, like, you know, make the sound of, of sniffing up, so yeah. I like the twist that Victoria and Constantine are pagans, and also it's interesting that Victoria disappears after that one cutscene where she, you know, she, you know, she, she branches out, you know, she, she's, yeah, covering you and stuff. I, having not played the others, I do kind of wonder if she'll come into play in some of the others, and that Constantine literally is the trickster, and the whole thing with the eye. You know, I had the feeling that maybe they were going to be, especially you know, when you go to his mansion that first time, you know, when you're told afterwards, oh, that was my mansion, and you're like, but I saw some weird stuff in there, so is that, yeah. But that he's actually the trickster, and he's got the horns and the whole thing, you know, to add more, you know, kind of Christian imagery. I mean, the, the whole thing with the hammer instead of the, the cross, you know, all... To be fair, it's not a complete ripoff because the hammer is a tool that the hammer order actually likes to use, as opposed to the means with which their supposed savior was, you know, killed horribly. So yeah, I had to, yeah. Anyway, it's it's a great twist, and that cutscene with you know them both turning and it's the horns, and she just you know. This eye is blind, so I'm gonna need your eye. And just adds it there, and yeah. Maybe it's just me, but I felt like Garrett couldn't run as fast afterwards. Is that like a depth perception thing? I couldn't help but wonder. I did also briefly consider if they were like gonna cover up half of the screen, but then I remembered that that's not how that stuff works. And. Yeah, the, the the rat people, I mentioned in the review that just because the folks are humanoid, doesn't tend to be humanoid, that doesn't necessarily make them any less creepy. The, you know, the rat people who at times speak a lot like Gollum, if he was a reject of the Lollipop Guild, yeah, their, their being humanoid just makes them creepier. For, Frankly, that's just, yeah, that... Now, the... I... I don't know if it's just me, but I felt kind of bad going into the, the, the haunted cathedral. Well, you know, not, not return to the haunted cathedral, but when you just go to the, the, you know, the door into the cathedral. It's just clearly... The, the many different types of undead, they're, they're living in a thriving multicultural harmony. I mean, you, you mostly don't see them fighting, you know, be it the, the skull-throwing ghost, the, the zombies, the, the big broodies, that hothead dude, the unholy offspring of Edward Scissorhands and the, you know, the, the Minotaur, the, I'm sorry, but that inventor, he, I'm sure he was lonely, but he clearly had a kinky side, that, that just, but to, to be fair, some of them do fight each other, which is actually kind of cool. I, 
Honestly, when doing stealth and when I'm not absolutely forced to fight, I tend to just kind of run from, from enemies. I just, I don't know, I think it's fun. And yeah, a big Bruby and a zombie collided and the, the zombie killed the big Bruby. And I, I didn't see the whole thing, but it makes sense. You know, the big Bruby can't completely kill the zombie. It doesn't have any holy water. And yeah, the big Bruby is basically, okay, I'll call it a Burrick, just for people who haven't actually played Earthworm Gym, although you should be very ashamed of yourself. Yeah, it, it makes sense, you know, the Burrick is essentially like an animal, as, yeah, and, you know, the zombie, it's undead. They're undead in this game. I really did not see that coming when I started playing the game. The, the, Right there in the in the second level, you you're not even in, in the prison. It's just like oh, it's it's haunted, but Garrett doesn't believe that. And just, zombie, you know, it actually it doesn't the first zombie actually like get up? Isn't it like a corpse and you move over and it's like and it gets up and starts walking towards you and you gotta do the you know holy water tip you know water arrows thing and shoot it. Yeah, that just that that's kind of that's that's. One of the first in a long list of WTF moments in this game. I love how this subverts your expectations. It's just every time you think you've got this game figured out. You know, suddenly you've got float, flying cannonball, fireballs that shoot fire at you as attacking. Uh, yeah, and and the the you could call the plot somewhat formulaic, but at the same, you'd have to complain about every major. It's it's a video game, it does kind of need that, you know, you're the best there is, so this one guy needs you to do this really important thing because nobody else could do it within your field. And, you know, when you actually do it, ah, he turns out to be a bad guy, and he's, you know... Yeah, this is this this hand movement means formulate plot, in, in case you were, you know, needed a refresher course on, on sign language. It's seen before, but really, it works! And frankly, I was fairly surprised, and it's... I'm sorry, if, if you don't jump in your seat when your eye gets torn out, I don't know how, what... I don't even know what to say to you. I, I just... And, and literally every single time Garrett died, and just the, the screen goes... You know, it's like in System Shock 2, you know, and, and he makes that scream, and just... Ugh. And I'm just like, God, God, I, I gotta not die anymore. Man, that just, you know, I'm not saying they should have done it any differently, obviously. But, but yeah, it's, yeah it, it makes sense that Constantine, they need you because they need a keeper level thief. You know, and obviously the keepers aren't gonna help Constantine. I mean, they'll take one look at Constantine and they'll go, dude, I know who you are. Okay, no. And, yeah, in fact, they're, they'd probably sooner die than help him. You know, they, they're so dedicated to maintaining balance. And Garrett isn't really... He just wants a paycheck. So, yeah. And, you know, for a little while I did think, well, he's got these pagan armies. At the same time, though, it's not only about fighting all these undead. It's also about sneaking into all these different places and stealing these, what are they called, the, the little talismans, the, the keys for the haunted cathedral, you know. The, the keepers, and that's, that's the clever thing, the keepers forged that lock. They made it so that almost no one would be able to even get in there. It's not only that it's guarded heavily by undead, who are really freaking powerful. Those hammer haunts, I think it's what it's called, the, the, you know, with the sword and the, you know, and they're, they're always laughing. I don't know, they, they just, something must be tickling them. Maybe it made some, some part of the armor is like, they're, they're always having a good time. I, I envy those guys, really. It, and and they, they have no complexion issues, did you notice that? Yeah, it's not only that it's, you know, so guarded, it's also, it takes a keeper to actually open that door. So obviously Garrett, who has keeper training, but is not aligned with the keepers, is the only one who could actually do it. So, it's, it's quite cleverly 
you know, crafted like that, I feel. And I love the, the foreboding of the ending, you know, one side is one. Was that really what was supposed to happen? The, the keepers have maintained balance for all this time, but now the, the trickster had to be killed. I'm pretty sure Constantine is actually the trickster, at least. And, and yeah, so literally the, the pagans lost. And like yeah, the the dawning of the metal age, and you see the the camera pants off these you know machine and and this man made structure kind of thing, and and before that we already seen that you know Garrett got a new eye, a mechanical eye. So what nature takes away, man man's science and ingenuity replaces, and yeah, that's that's you know, somewhat the theme and. You know, you, you might all almost say, I mean, he got his own eye lost. Uh, you know, it's not, not like, where did I put my eyeball this time? If he hadn't allied himself with Constancy, if, if he had made sure to find out, you know, if they were, like, threatening world peace, you know, something small like that, before he worked for them, instead of just thinking about being getting paid, he might not have lost his eye, so, you know, his arrogance, I suppose you could say, his, his carelessness got him in trouble, and man-made ingenuity, you know, helps him, but in reality, he got himself into that situation, so, yeah, yeah the, just, I love how the, the theme, this, this conflict is treated throughout the game. Now, the, the... I quite like the, the one level of social stuff when you are, you know, you, you have to go into this, this what's it called, the, the hammer, was it temple or church or something like that, and steal one of the talismans, and basically everyone thinks that you're a, I don't like it, conscript, I'm gonna go with that, they, they think that you're, you know, in training. So you're not allowed to speak on the temple grounds, and you're not allowed to go in certain places. And if they catch you going into one of these, you know, marked with a, a red hammer, they'll be like, wait, something's wrong. You know you're not supposed to go in there, and they'll attack you. And yeah, that, that really makes great sense. Also that they wouldn't... It's not an overreaction. You might say, you know, in, in our world, you might think, are they going to attack someone for accidentally opening a door he shouldn't have been in an area? If they're, they're the hammer. They're all about, you know, what's right and what's wrong. It's, it's very black and white for them. And someone who's in training with them would know that and would never even think of doing something like that. In fact, if he did, he's obviously not good enough to be in training and they might actually beat him to death with hammers right there on the spot. So, uh, yeah. I do... Maybe it's nitpicky, but I wondered why they warned me about the barracks. I, I walked into both barrack rooms and they were like, You should know not to go in here. I'll let you off with the warning this time, but get out of here before someone higher up comes. But if they catch me in a place with a red hammer, then they're all like, Okay, I'm going to beat you to death with a hammer. As you do. Now... The, I, I love the use of Constantine's mansion to show the power of their magic, where it's it's somewhat it's it's either that the trickster gets more power just by getting the eye and and you know getting Garrett's eye into the eye. The the I I suppose you could say that Garrett's eye is in the beholder. Yeah, the it, either it's that he gets more power from the eye, or it's that he didn't want to reveal how much power he had. You know, yeah. The first time you go in there, it's like this is weird. This is there's something is not right in this place. You know, you have these doors that just lead. I, I love the when you go into a room and it's literally like stars down there, stars all the way around, and and. I couldn't help it. I, I saved my game, tried to run out, and, and he literally fell down, fell into nothing, and died. And just, 
I love that. That's that's just that's just awesome. That is insane. And yeah, and then the second time you go there or wake up there, it's just overrun with there's there's nature stuff like plant life inside and you have these giant cockroaches, I guess, and and the rat people walking around, you know, it's clearly you know, his power is growing, or that kind of thing. It's, it's, you know, the, the excrement just hit the air conditioner, to, to quote. I can't believe I don't remember the title of that movie. Mother Night, I think. Man, I gotta rewatch that movie. I can't believe I don't even remember. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Vonnegut. It's, 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 yeah. Good stuff. Anyway, I, I suppose the you know, air conditioner had already been excremented when the, the eye got to take it, but yeah. Yeah, that happens at the same time. Anyway, now the... I... I like... The, the Maw of Chaos, the final level, is cool and it's, it's fairly chilling. But I do still feel like they put most of the good stuff into that first Constantine Mansion level. I don't know, it just, it doesn't feel as, I mean, in the mansion you've got like the, the... Yeah, like I said, you, you open a door and literally story night above and below and just, and, and these bizarre and clearly cult stuff is going on there and so yeah so like doors that lead to other dimensions suddenly and it just it, it got really surreal there and I don't feel like they top that at a later point in the game not in surreal in, in surreal so surrealism it got more threatening and it got more nature-y but it didn't get quite as surreal but Still, there, there are definitely some, some cool things, such as the, the water which flows upwards. That was, that was really cool. I actually, it, it didn't take me terribly long to realize that, you know, I'm going to go down into that, you know, that thing. Is that like, did I just impregnate the trickster? Is that like pagan sex going into this big, you know, blue, icy, spiky, you know, I, I feel like I just got Megan Kelly pregnant, man, anyway, yeah, so, so, that is quite, quite cool, but, the slip and slide of spiky death, it, yeah, to me, wasn't that good. You know, they even had Gary go like, oh, I better not do that again. I, I can just see Bart Simpson going, let's go again, let's go again. It just, it was tense. I will give them that. It just wasn't this, I, I just feel like, there's very little positive to say about uh, Matrix, The Path of Neo, the video game from 2005, but it has a level. It's not good in that game, but I feel like it may have worked in part in the Mall of Chaos. Basically, you are, you know, in, in that it's because it's like the Merovingian, it's the, the you know, Keymaker, Doors, Lead, Everywhere and Nowhere kind of thing. And it's got this real, is it MC Escher maybe, where, where like, you know, suddenly you're walking, you stare at the Lead, you know, and everywhere, kind of, just very weird level design. I feel like that might have been interesting for the Mall of Chaos. But I do feel like it, you know, don't get me wrong, it does look very otherworldly, very different dimension than ours, and I shouldn't be here, I want to get away from here, kind of thing. Now, I suppose that pretty much cover it, covers it. Now, the, the, Like I say in the main review, the, the climax is a, it's thief related, 
but I'm not sure it's completely satisfying. It's, it's cool enough seeing the, the trickster blow up with the, the booby-trapped eye. It, it is interesting, and I'm not saying that as necessarily negative, that the trickster himself has to do a ritual and can be killed whilst doing that, you know, it, it maybe says something about that, uh, you know, even, even in this kind of, even with all this magic, there are still limitations. There is still a chance of it, you know, he didn't realize that it wasn't the real eye, and it did kill him. You know, for, like, again, for a while I was like, wait, Constantine, like, maybe just the high priest of the pagan order, or is he actually the trickster? But, yeah, it's, you know, they, they literally say, the trickster is dead, so yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's interesting that he could be killed like that, and, yeah, but, it, yeah, it's, it's cool having to, like, like, it was one of the few times where I actually was like, okay, I gotta take this really seriously. I, I used moss arrows, and I was like, okay, when is he facing away? Because one time, I just kind of ran up. Admittedly, I was getting a little tired <laughs> near the end. I feel horrible for saying that, because it's an awesome game, and I love it, but I've been playing a lot of stealth, and... I, I think I just need a little bit of a break from stealth gaming, maybe, but anyway, yeah, so the first time I kind of got spotted, and I didn't realize at first, and I just, you know, I noticed that the the place I came from got all, like, you know, the, the what's it called? Yeah, the, the nature-y stuff turned into that crystal stuff, which, which harms you from touch, and... I started losing health just from nothing, and I could tell that he had stopped the ritual, and he was kind of like walking after me and such. And so I loaded and you know, did it over and took care not to get spotted. But yeah, it was it was a it was a cool ending to be sitting there just waiting for you know him to blow up like that. And it's I like that it didn't force some kind of action. It's it's not that you're suddenly like taking on a god with your sword or something, you know. It's still the thief, and it's still this... I love him. In fact, after the after that big twist with Constantine, he's the trickster, you know, Garrett isn't like, well, I, I guess I should go save the world, and it's, it's Superman pose and the whole thing. It's kind of like, well, I... If the trickster, and, well, he doesn't specifically say it, but I feel like Garrett probably kind of, at least in part, mainly wanted to make sure he could go on living the way he wanted to. You know, if nature takes over and, you know, it's, is he going to start stealing from rat people? Come on now. It's, no, he needs the world to be. And he may be also to. I can't help but feel partially responsible for this, as Bart would say. It's... Yeah, you know, he, he doesn't just go, well, I must go and stop this, even though I know absolutely nothing about this, you know, supernatural demon. He's like, only the Hammers even believed that the trickster was still real, you know, nobody else actually believed. It was just, people had forgotten that he had existed, you know. And he doesn't just go, well, I should just go, no, no he's like, you know what would be good? Hammer help. It, it's hammer time, and he he goes, yeah, it's, he's like, well, I guess I could try to get them to help me, I could explain everything, if they put me in jail, I already know how to break out. I love that, I love his snark. And, and anyway, so he goes there, and of course, the trickster is already attacked, because he knows that the hammer is the only ones who can stop him. And it's only because you get help from the hammers that you can stop him, of course. And so when you get to them, you know, they're like, ah, the thief, the master thief. Great, you know, and they're like, find us, find our high priest, bring him back here alive. And I guess he was just unconscious. It's not really said specifically, but if you find him and then you run off. I actually did that one time. It goes like, you know, mission fail or you're dead. Or you know, it goes, it does the skull and crossbones kind of thing. And it'll have crossed out the thing with return to the hammers with the 
the high priest, you know, so I guess they kill him after that, but yeah. And you gotta, you know, sail him on the slightly physics-defining little raft there, which, yeah, is, yeah, and, and drag him over there. I, I quite like that, that was a good use of, again, you know, you go to them, it makes sense from a story perspective, because Garrett knows he needs their help, and the level also makes sense because you find out they're under attack, so you have to sneak past the people, or... I didn't, but yeah, you, I, I think you're supposed to sneak past. And you basically, yeah, they, they tell you you have to get in there, you know, we can't fight them all off, so you have to sneak in, get the high priest who's being guarded, and get him back here, and then we'll help you, because, you know, they need the high priest. It's, yeah, and then they they don't tell you, here, you know, armor, weapon, go fight it. No, it's, you're a thief, we have this, you know, booby-trapped, you know, fake eye, go and replace that one, go replace the real one with that one, without being seen, and when he finishes the ritual, he'll die. And that's, it, it, it's very cleverly thought out. I do just wish that it just, it just does not quite have the impact of like a really, I don't know, maybe if it had been like a, what's it called? If there had been more things you had to do in that last level, but the, the game had kind of gotten into this, you know, it's, it usually is, you have to get into the area, steal or exchange or some or one thing, and then get back out. So, it, it kind of was, it, it makes sense that they did that. And, again, I really like that they went there with the, the story, ending on this very ominous note of, yes, one side won over the other, but was that a good thing? It was the only outcome, of course. They had to kill the, the, the trickster with, you know, he had the eye, he was back to a lot of power. He opened the Maw of Chaos. Okay, there is no going back. Point of no return, just, I guess, this way. Depending on if you're walking forwards or backwards. But it was, it was a necessary evil. It wasn't the preferred outcome of the Keepers. And it, it leaves a lot of room for, you know, the second game and yeah, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to the, the rest of the, the trilogy. And, I don't know, I, I suppose cautiously hopeful for the remake that I think is on its way still, I don't remember exactly. But I've been knee-deep in research for this particular game, so yeah. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Yeah, I, I, I really, really liked the... I, I actually, briefly, I suppose I'll end on the note of the, the, where the, the title comes from, the, the Dark Project. Constantine leaves this book where you read about his motivation, and it clearly is. It's not like, ah, oh, I have, you know, Saturday morning cartoon evil villain who just wants to destroy him. No, he actually has motivation, you know, he wants to make people dream and fear again, because the, the, we understand things now, and with understanding, we lose something, and I, Again, I love science. It's, it's, I, I will fight hard for science and against ignorance, but there are, there are things we lose from, from science. There, there are some, some of the, some of the inventions we, we come up with, some, some, some intimacy and relation and just, yeah, the various things are, are lost 
buy some of the, you know, you, you don't, yeah, this is, this is going to sound really cheesy and quaint, but here it goes. When I was a kid, me and my mother would bake just, like, buns for just, you know, on a kid, like, like, you know, in the summer, in the, in the summer holiday, you know, stay home, bake the buns, you know, some family would come over or something. It was fun. It was, it was bonding. It was, it was very, it was a great experience. And today, you can just go to you know, the, the mall and get like, you know, some powder that you just mix up with water and put in the oven and oh, buns. And just, you save time, but that time was not wasted just because you don't have to spend it. You, you do lose some things and sometimes not worrying about things. There's, there's like, you know, the younger generation feels like they know more than the older generation today because the younger generation can look up everything on the internet and they have an easier time of the internet than the older generation. But thus, we also lose some there. You know, some, sometimes the, the older generation has a perspective because of the longer life and the, the different They've, they've seen social changes that we've only read about. Uh, you know, young people today who don't experience, like, I mean, I, th I don't think a lot of people can imagine slavery or actual, like, racial se segregation and things like that, which is why there are actually people arguing for it to come back. The, the people wouldn't actually be doing that if they could at all imagine what it would be like in that kind of kind of circumstance, and yeah, some sometimes even just the fact that you can read about it online doesn't necessarily mean you fully appreciate it when you don't. I mean, my father. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm going to abstain from the extremely obvious Joker. The Dark Knight reference. Anyway, my father is from 43, 1943. When he was a child, it was right after the Second World War. He, he remembers watching footage from Vietnam on TV. He can, he can contrast that with coverage and, and the tone of the media with, to, towards war today and that's extremely that's that there's there's something to learn from that because clearly the, the way the I'm not gonna go into a rant but just briefly the way the American government wants coverage of the wars they are getting into more or less necessarily today clearly shows that they've learned from the coverage of Vietnam. So we have to as well. We have to keep in mind that when we actually see people suffering, we want it to end. And I don't think there's actually that much public support for the war anymore, for the wars anymore, but it certainly is a, there's, there's a lot it's a very different situation, and so, so yeah, I, I just, I, I love that the game literally, you know, it's, it's not the, wah, my evil plan, it's literally, this is why I'm doing this, and it makes sense, and you can't really completely, you, you know that he has to die, you know that this has to be stopped, because again, the, the, the balance, and if nothing else, you could say that the hammers also probably shouldn't completely be in charge, but they didn't just do a major coup. They didn't just, you know, I mean, the, the trickster's been in hiding for so long, and when he gets the eye back, he slaughters the hammer, you know, people. Maybe the hammer would have done, but it just... Lesser of two evils, kind of thing. You at, at the end of the day, you you really have to, yeah. And anyway, 
phenomenal game, and I am extremely happy that it has not been forgotten. I didn't, I didn't find this just, you know, searching through old seas of mine. It was on sale on Steam. It's been a while since it was, but I think it might have been on sale at least once since I bought it, actually. But, but yeah, it... I really appreciate that it's, it's still getting... Currently, System Shock 2 is on sale on Steam. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.